Welcome back to Watching Film. Now we're going to talk about the UCF defense. Not a great unit statistically uh, up to this point of the season. Except in one area. They're really good at causing turnovers. They've actually caused 20 through 8 games. And as a team, UCF is number one in the country in turnover margin. Now that is kind of a key stat when you play offense the way they do. You want more possessions and you also get shorter fields. You score quickly, you can start to really roll on people, and then your tempo kind of can really get cranked up and really take over games. So I think this is kind of the what the style they want to play. Obviously, they'd rather be better at it, but this high-risk, high-reward type of defense, high-variance defense, uh, couples well with an up-tempo offense. Because when it's on, you're going to be getting your offense the ball back a lot. And when it's off, you can kind of win in shootouts maybe. Hasn't worked out perfectly for them this year. But I think that's kind of what the idea is. So here they're playing Temple. Temple's playing two tight ends. They come out with the under front. So under front is the one tech to the tight end side. And we walk up a backer outside the tight end. That's an under front. They're going to bring some pressure out of this front. So you're going to get all five on the line of scrimmage coming. This end here is going to try to cross face in here. He'll go outside. I think they want to bring him in this, in this gap. He ends up kind of looping outside and getting all the way around on what looks like a delay. Could be an add on blitz. Um, could just be a guy freelancing. But it appears to be designed with the way we're getting some type of movement here. Cross face, some type of slant, it looks like. Generate what could have been a sack and turns it into a turnover. Perfect. Exactly what you want from your defense. But the kind of aggressiveness of bringing six guys, you know, that that's being aggressive. It's second and six. Not an obvious running down. Probably a passing down, but bringing pressure nonetheless. Here it is again. You're going to bring the corner here. So he's going to come inside. You got the slant there. He's going to come inside, off the corner. You're going to get a win inside here for one of your guys. It looks like Temple busts here. But still, third and two, bringing the corner when you got this stud receiver out here by himself. There's nobody there for him right now. But... That's kind of you're being aggressive. That's what you want to do. So the corner comes. The tackle, for some reason, sets out of the corner. And then gives the end a free rush. Then your defensive tackle in here wins. And you cause another negative play. In college football, negative plays on defense are kind of the name of the game. When you can cause a negative play, the chance the offense scores on that drive goes down drastically. So... If you can just try to generate negative plays for the offense, that can be an effective defense. And that seems to be what UCF is trying to do. Another example of aggressiveness here. Now here's the third and long. He's inside here, try to draw the eyes, coming outside. So I'm hoping I get this guard to turn with his inside. I'm hoping I get him to turn outside with that blitzer and then I'm gonna bring another one right between those two so kind of opening the gate put three on two if I can over here they get what they want they actually get a full slide so now the back comes back and has to pick one of two and he gets home causes a bad throw and the defense gets off the field on third down but again, being aggressive, bringing pressure, playing, you know, there's not a lot of coverage you can play behind that type of pressure. So you have to have some confidence in your back end guys and the confidence in your blitzing guys to get there, and they do, and they blow this play up before it even has a chance. Similar, kind of similar idea here, but kind of on the interior. 
against Cincinnati early in the game. Line up as a one tech. Coming here. Here. He's going to try to draw. And then he's coming back across. So we're kind of overloading. Putting four on three here. So right there. Right, he started here, went wide. He rushed wide. That linebacker came across to there. Well, that guy picked it up perfect. Well, here's the other one coming through now. You get a wind by your edge rusher, and you also would have got both those blitzers coming through clean because the center wasn't able to get there in time. So again, there, there, all the way back across to the opposite A-gap. Through this A-gap, you got two guys in the A-gap, center's in trouble. One comes clean, one gets through pretty easily, and then you got somebody off the edge for an easy sack early, early, early in the Cincinnati game. Again, a great aggressive design. So you kind of, you probably, you know, you think, all right, they're blitzing a ton. They're probably going to play a ton of man. They do play some, but this is kind of interesting. This play sets up. They're trying to set this up for man. They're trying to bring him in and crack, hoping the corner follows him. And the screen gets outside here, and then the corner somehow gets pinned down inside, right? So they're 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 guessing that UCF is going to be running man coverage. So the receiver goes in to crack. You can see the corner just points him out like he's going inside. It looked like one high safety. He's kind of rolling. He's rolling back here. So you see he's turned to squat, but he didn't follow him inside. He kind of squatted out here. So as soon as this ball is thrown, he can make a break on it. Bang. Jars the ball loose on third down. They call it incomplete. Defense gets off the field. But again, you're thinking, man, if this is man and he follows him all the way in there, you got a pretty good play right here. But they kind of switch it up on you. And then the corner comes up and makes a physical play. Now it doesn't always work out like that. So here, Cincinnati loves to run mesh. They motion... Appears to be a tight end across here. And then he's going to come back across the formation. UCF blitzes the corner here. So that same corner blitz we saw earlier. Inside. He's coming outside. The back, a lot of times here, this could have been the adjustment adjustment by the back or this could have just been part of it a lot of times on the mesh game he'll slip out but here he sees the blitzer and picks him up so instead of slipping out i pick him up right there it must have been um this may have been like a mesh kind of variant where these guys are kind of running both shallows and then you got like a dig behind it here so it could have been almost like a shallow cross variation or drive variation but um the back stays in blocks. Your tight end gets loose. And since you brought pressure, you're playing man coverage. Linebacker gets beat. And it's a fairly easy touchdown right there. You got a 29-yard touchdown pass on about a 6-yard throw. So when you bring pressure, you got to hit. They hit a lot, but they don't hit every time. That's why their numbers aren't spectacular. But they'll kind of take that risk-reward. They're going to take the bad with the good because the good gets in the ball back quickly. And that's really what they're looking for. Give that great offense the ball back. So what does that mean for USF? That means USF has chances to make plays. UCF gives up a ton of explosives every game. They're one of the worst defenses in the country. And in terms of explosive rate, explosiveness rate, so kind of the rate of plays they allow that are explosive, um, they're really bad. USF has had a really tough time generating explosive plays on offense. Something's got to give. If it gives in USF's favor, maybe we have more of a game than we think. 
Uh, if UCF's able to use this aggressiveness and these schemes to get to the USF quarterbacks, uh, then the Bulls are going to be in for a long night, I fear.